Great, thanks so much, Dustin. And thank you to all of you for joining us at the end of two very long days of Zoom virtual Ashoka U. So thank you uh, for being the resilient ones and being with us at this time on a Friday. Um, and I just wanted to say, you know, in particular, we are living obviously in unprecedented times. And so I hope you are all safe wherever you are. And uh, thank you for prioritizing this session uh, during these rather turbulent times that we're all, we're all living through. Um, as I was reflecting and preparing for this session today, it really made me feel and remind me that um, this, this idea of how do we really engage students as a force to help really build the economy we want, it seems more timely and more important than ever. I think if anything, this global health crisis has helped us understand that we are at a, a critical juncture um, and we can think about how we build the economy for the future and whether we get it right or whether we get it wrong. Um, I think one of the things we want to share today is that we do have principles and tools that we can apply to help redesign our global economy so that it is more inclusive and more regenerative. And so we're excited to share this model of the B Corp Clinic with you all today. And we really invite you to join us um, in, in implementing this similar program at your own universities. So I'm going to be joined today by two of my wonderful colleagues, um, fellow board members of the academics, um, Kristen Joyce from the University of Florida and Jessica Thomas from NC State University. And I just want to acknowledge at the beginning, in case we don't get to it later, that Jessica Thomas was really the, was the inventor and the entrepreneur that really designed this idea of, of a B Corp clinic at a university. Um, and uh, she has so generously shared it with many of us to replicate on our own campuses. So thank you, Jessica, for your leadership in, in, in this. So just a little bit about what we are hoping to um, do today with you all. Um, oh, my slides are freezing. Let's see if we can get them to move. Okay, there we go. Um, so we want to just give a little bit of context. Um, as I said, we're, we're living in extraordinary times and this health crisis has really shone a, uh, sh shone a light on sort of some of the issues with our current economy. So we want to talk a little bit about Gen Z, which is our current generation of students and their attitudes and values. We're also going to share an overview for those of you that aren't familiar of B Lab and the B Corp movement, which is really a movement to build a more conscious form of capitalism. And then I'll hand over to Jessica and she's going to share with you a little bit more about the B Corp clinic model um, that, that she has designed and we are now using in a variety of different universities around the country. And then well, at the end, we'll have time for some general Q&A and then we'll go to some breakout rooms for a deeper dive into some of our specific programs. So again, just by way of context, um, we know that uh, capitalism is uh, not exactly doing so well right now. Um, the Americans aged 18 to 29 are um, viewing capitalism less and less positively. Um, just a 12 point decline just in the last two years alone. So, you know, it's pretty amazing, right, that less than 50% of Americans of this age group now think capitalism is a positive force in the world. Similar study that was done by Deloitte um, a couple of years ago as well, the Deloitte Millennial Survey, or, is also showing this, this trend, right, that people are becoming less and less convinced that businesses and corporate leaders are really working for the good of society. And that, I think, sharply contrasts with data that we have about Gen Z that really shows that this current generation of university students are deeply aware of the sort of big issues in the world, climate change, poverty, inequality, social justice. And I think really wonderfully, they are also a generation that wants to use their educations and their careers to make a positive impact on the world. You can see here, that's the number one criterion, right? Almost 50% of them see themselves as doing work that has a positive impact on society and that they'll use that as a measure of career success. Another study that was done by Net Impact a few years ago, you know, shows a similar trend, right? Almost three quarters of undergrads see themselves as leaders who will improve the world's social or environmental challenges. 
And we're seeing that play out in the kinds of um, education that the students are looking for. Again, you can see here, you know, a lot of interest from undergraduate students in having more educational content um, around some of these issues. And this, uh, I don't need to really say this to this group, but um, because Ashoka is the is the uh, is the is of uh, the the creator of the change maker concept, um, but you know this is really you know driving this need right for students who can graduate with change maker competences, and um, we're excited to share with you today a little bit more about a movement, the B Corp movement, that we think is a really important part of these change maker competences. I also just want to sort of reiterate as well that, you know, this is also about career success and career pre preparation. Um, this is a survey that AACU did, but really shows the gap between what employers are looking for and what they think college graduates are providing or, or the, the skills that college graduates have as they graduate, right? There's a really big gap between what they want um, and, and what they are seeing in recent graduates. And so that really brings us to this power of kind of immersive learning or high impact learning or real world learning, whatever you want to refer, however you want to refer to it. But this idea that we really, you know, not to replace the classroom, right? The, the discipline based learning in the classroom is, is vital and necessary. But increasingly, I think we're coming to a recognition that it's not sufficient that we need to get students out of the classroom, out of their comfort zones, out of the context they know, and give them opportunities to apply their knowledge in real world settings with businesses, with nonprofits, um, and other community partners. And just by way of uh, just a little bit of data, um, a study that we did with Gallup at UNH a few years ago that has been replicated nationally really shows that for, student, for, for alums who participated in this kind of high impact real world learning while they were in college, they have sort of almost two and a half times greater um, measures on sort of career outcomes. And for those of you that you know, are working regionally, um, I imagine this kind of data would also be replicated in your own areas that we, we also see that any student at UNH in or out of state who interns in New Hampshire while they're in college is eight times more likely to stay in New Hampshire for their for their future job. So really, this is a really also a really powerful story about um, economic development and sort of um, retaining talent uh, within our regions. So that's a little bit of context about Generation Z, what they're looking for and sort of why we're trying to embed more of this sort of high impact real world learning um, in the university experience. And that's really where our partnership with, with B-Lab, a global nonprofit, uh, comes in. Um, for those of you that don't know B-Lab, they are about 10 years old now. They are, um, they're really, their mission is really about how it's harnessing um, people to use business as a force for good in the world. Um, and some context here for those of you that don't uh, know much about uh, certified B corporations. Um, really, this is driven again by by consumers, right? Who are who are demanding better. Um, and I think over the last twenty years, we've in response to that, we've seen a proliferation of um, some wonderful product level certifications, things like the USDA, USDA Organic Seal. Um, fair trade coffee and chocolate, Forest Alliance certified products, et cetera, right? Those are all really important product level certifications, but they really are about um, helping consumers um, and investors distinguish between sort of good products and just good marketing. And really where what B-Lab is now building is a movement to really help consumers, investors, employees really distinguish between good companies and just good marketing. A few quotes here on the, on the screen that I won't read in the interest of time, um, but you can see here some, some pretty impressive individuals um, talking about sort of the value of the B Corp movement um, in, this, in this quest to really help harness the potential of business to address some of the most pressing social and environmental challenges we face as a society today. So at the heart of B-Lab's sort of theory of change, if you like, um, is this integrated approach to, to systems change. And so um, 
I'm going to focus really on step two. And so step two is about creating the tools that make it easy for millions of businesses to follow some of the early pioneering businesses. And this really comes in the form of the B Corp certification. Um, so a way to think about certified B Corps is it's sort of what response, the responsible down standard is to your equipment or lead is to your office building, but it's applied to your whole company. Um, I think the number I checked this a couple of days ago, but I think we're at about 3,200 um, certified B Corps around the world, uh, many in the United States, but increasingly uh, in around the globe in over 60 countries and really covering 150 industries. And you can see a few of the, um, so some of the better known certified B Corps here on the screen, I'm sure companies that you are all familiar with. So as I said, what we really wanted to focus on today is the, the tools that are really helping make this movement scale to thousands of businesses around the world. And at, the, at the heart of this movement is the B Impact Assessment. Um, Jessica is going to get into a little bit more detail about what this means, um, but it's a very rigorous open source assessment that allows companies to really assess and improve their impact in these five, um, five areas. So with that, I'm going to hand over to Jessica, who's going to tell us a little bit more about this model of B Impact Clinics. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Fiona, for setting the stage, for introducing the B Corp movement. Um, I'm really excited to share with you a little bit more about B Impact Teams, our B Corp Clinic, and this framework that all of us uh, on this call are developing to really uh, create experiential learning programs to prepare our students to really lead that shift that Fiona described and really um, you know, shifting the vision, the purpose of this is to really address social and environmental issues. Um, this is something that I've been uh, studying B Corporations for close to 10 years now since the, uh, the early days of the movement. Um, if you could move to the next slide, Fiona. Um, and uh, I'm fortunate to be part of the leadership team of B Academics, so along with Fiona and Kristen, uh, who are joining us on the call, we're part of the board of B Academics, which is a global network of educators and researchers. We're all studying B Corps, benefit corporations, conducting research and working on um, applied learning and experiential uh, learning programs, connecting our students, our faculty with the global B Corp community. Um, and we're like really excited that this is a very um, uh, large and growing and dynamic network and encourage those of you who um, are interested in this topic um, to join us as part of the, the B Academics and Network. If you'll move to the next slide, Fiona. And so one of the things uh, that I think is, is particularly exciting about that framework that Fiona just described is, you know, I've, I've had the opportunity to work at a number of different academic institutions where students have come to us and companies have come to us in our academic centers seeking to really um, you know, build consulting programs around this whole idea of how can we connect students to local businesses to help them improve their impact. Um, and so this B Impact Assessment Framework that Fiona shared uh, briefly has really provided essentially a roadmap um, and a community of leaders um, to help our students really, um, you know, engage with companies in an easy, fun um, format that allows them to help companies really measure and improve on their social and environmental impact. And you'll hear about three examples of B Impact teams uh, on today's session, but there are many others across the country and around the world. And we're learning about new uh, B Impact teams and B Corp clinics um, uh, that, are, that are being developed uh, really uh, around the world. Next slide, please, Fiona. So I think one of the opportunities presented by this B Impact Assessment Framework is that across those five areas that Fiona described, um, it's essentially this in-depth questionnaire that helps companies measure and manage their impact anywhere from zero to 200 and even beyond. Um, and so it provides essentially a roadmap and companies can start anywhere on this roadmap and really chart their progress to anywhere across, um, you know, across this scale. 
Um, and so for us, from a B Corp clinic perspective, our goal isn't so much in working with companies to become certified, but really working with them to help them benchmark where they're starting out on this scale from an impact perspective and work with them, connect them with students to help them chart a path from good to great to outstanding to you know, potentially extraordinary. So if you'll keep going. Thanks, Fiona. And so the, um, the opportunity the B Impact Assessment really provides in this B Corp Clinic, in this B Impact Team model, um, is that it provides a framework um, for students to work with companies um, across any of these five areas. And so the B Impact Assessment covers hundreds of different questions um, looking at to what impact is a company providing uh, a positive work environment. And so it looks at questions like, um, you know, what percentage of your employees are paid a fair wage? Um, and depending on that percentage, um, the higher the percentage, the more points you get. It looks at, for example, um, to what degree, how much time are your employees uh, volunteering with local nonprofits, right? And the more time, the more opportunities employees have to engage with nonprofits, the more points um, a company can receive. So it provides this really um, broad, rigorous, um, comprehensive framework um, to help companies measure and improve their impact across a company's different stakeholders, as you can see here. And so if you can keep moving, Fiona. And so just sharing here um, just a high level model of our B Corp clinic at NC State, you know, as we've discussed, this is an opportunity for our students to connect with local as well as global companies. Um, I won't go into it in detail here, but when we will do some breakout rooms if we have time a little bit later, but we've actually built an entirely virtual model for our B Corp clinic. And this framework allows us to work in with students in virtual teams and means that they can work with companies anywhere in the world. Um, and also, uh, particularly given the current climate, for, uh, has allowed us to really adapt very quickly um, to a model that was, in our case, 90% virtual and 10% online, and to a model that's now 100% virtual and allows us to kind of wrap up um, our clinic this semester. But we're working with local and global companies. Um, we're engaging students across different disciplines. And I think that's one of the exciting things about this framework is it can be a team of just MBA students, or you can have interdisciplinary students from across a, a single academic institution, or in our case, we actually work with academic institutions, public, private um, academic institutions across the state of North Carolina uh, to create what we envision is a very rich learning experience that will, as closely as we can, model the type of experience students will have in the real world. So working in interdisciplinary teams with students from different backgrounds, um, using virtual communication and project management tools, working across different time zones uh, with people from different uh, different cultural backgrounds. Um, it's a really for us a win-win opportunity, you know, provides uh, us an opportunity to connect with companies, connect those companies with really passionate, talented students to help them strengthen their impact and also to get them connected to the, the larger B Corp community. And so we've had the chance, this is, we're wrapping up our 10th semester of our B Corp clinic next week. Um, we had the chance to work with hundreds of students and we've able, been able to measure the impact that those students have had um, points by points um, by the, the impact that they've had uh, on, the, on the assessment. So we'll keep going from there. If you'll move to the next slide, please, Fiona. Um, so just sharing here kind of a quick snapshot of um, how our teams are structured, and I'm happy to go to, into this in a little bit more detail um, when we go into the breakout rooms, but essentially we typically have teams of three to six students. Each one of them is paired with a company representative um, from the company we're working with. We typically will identify one or two MBA students to serve as team leads, uh, and then we work with representatives from our local B Corp community uh, to serve as team coaches to bring that subject matter expertise um, and to be the, the primary points of coaching and contact for the students. If you'll keep going. 
Uh, just sharing here a really quick high level timeline um, that we've used for this, uh, this spring clinic. clinic. Um, and usually these are for us, and I think in most cases, semester long engagement, but there's a lot of flexibility here as well. So depending on kind of the time frame, whether you're working in quarters or in semesters or in trimesters, there's a lot of flexibility um, around the timeline for a project. But just sharing here some of the key milestones um, and for the sake of time, I won't go into this in too much detail, but happy to talk more about what a timeline might look like uh, in the breakout as well. And if we'll keep moving. Um, so just sharing here some examples of some of the companies and some of the partners we've worked with. As I mentioned, um, certification for us is not the primary goal. We've worked over the last five years with 12 companies that have become B Corp certified, five companies that have pursued recertification. Um, companies are required to recertify every three years, but most of the projects that we've worked on have focused on impact improvement. So companies that aren't necessarily seeking to become B Corp certified, but want to use the B Impact Assessment as a framework for impact. And here are examples of companies from startups to multinational companies like Red Hat across various industries, across various sectors. Our model is working with students from across different academic institutions, across different disciplines, and we've been fortunate to engage, next slide please, Fiona, um, a, an incredible network of coaches who are part of our B Local Triangle, which is the network of uh, local B Corps here in the North Carolina Triangle region um, who are very invested in building the B Corp community. And so they've been critical partners to us, serving as coaches, serving as sponsors. And I think that's one of the key, another key factor um, that's really exciting about the B Impact team and the B Corp Clinic model is not only is this, uh, there this clear framework, but there's also this clear network of leaders who are deeply committed and deeply engaged in the success um, of the movement and are invested in working with our students and serving as a resource to our students. So with that, I will wrap up. Um, and I'm going to hand it back over to Fiona to talk about the, uh, the differences, um, how, how the UNH model is a little bit different, but sharing here my contact information and would love to follow up with folks uh, later. Thanks so much, Jessica. That was great. Um, and just in the interest of time, I want to hand back over uh, to Kristen in a few minutes because um, I've already done a lot of talking. Um, but just to say that the, the B Impact Clinic that we have at UNH um, was modeled and heavily influenced by Jessica's model at NC State. Um, and it's part of our Center for Social Innovation and Enterprise. We're a, um, a, a center that sits at the, uh, across the university. We work with students from all disciplines, all of the five colleges at UNH, um, and really have a suite of programs that is about helping our students graduate with the confidence and competence and experience to be change makers. Um, and the B Impact Clinic is just one of a number of programs um, that we offer they're all focused on sort of real-world um, community-based programming. Um, so at the, just a few of the key differences um, here at, uh, at, U in, uh, in, at UNH. Um, just like Jessica, we, we are a sort of a collaboration between the university. We also work closely with B Lab, particularly when we're working with companies that are going through um, certification. Um, and we also partner very closely with our New Hampshire businesses for social responsibility. Um, we, we are not lucky enough to have a B local in our area, although we're starting to work now a little bit more with our B local down in the Boston area, which is a couple of hours from where we are. Um, but I think this idea of having a community anchor, a partner, whether whether it's a, a BSR or a B local um, is, is pretty pivotal. Um, we are just two years into our program, so four semesters, so um, um, and growing slowly and deliberately, we wanted to, um, this is a this is a credit bearing program. Um, students um, are receiving two academic credits uh, so uh, for this program and so we wanted to build it slowly and intentionally to give us time to build the curriculum to build a model that would be high value for students um, the outcomes and the value to our community partners so this semester we're working with four companies um, like Jessica uh, we work with both local companies and companies um, from further away um, a day for example is a sustainable fashion company based in New York City and um, they have we've never met them 
in person, it's all being done on video Zoom. So this really is a model. Um, I would concur with Jessica that, you know, even in normal times, this is a model that can work highly remotely, um, but it's certainly holding up during our current health crisis. Mm. A couple of other points of differentiation. We, um, we do not have a large MBA program at UNH, and so we actually primarily work with undergraduate students. Um, many come from the business school, for sure, um, but we intentionally uh, encourage students from other disciplines, um, particularly uh, students who are part of our dual major in sustainability, um, because we find that really helps with um, the knowledge needed um, for the different uh, parts of the B Impact Assessment. Um, we were lucky enough to get some funding that allows us to pay um, students who have been through the, the program at least once to stay in the clinic and uh, any student can repeat the clinic and in fact we encourage students to repeat the clinic we think there's a pretty steep learning curve and it's it's valuable for students to do this multiple times to be able to sort of pay it forward and 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 benefit from their experience and also of course you know experience working with other companies and other industries um, but we the peer mentors play a pretty important role and so we wanted to honor that with um, with a with a financial stipend that we we implemented about a year ago and as I said already this is also a, a two credit bearing course as part of UNH's business in practice curriculum so happy to get into any more of the differences when we get into Q&A or the breakouts, but I'm going to hand over now to Kristen Joyce, who's at the University of Florida. Thank you so much, Fiona. So um, as uh, Fiona mentioned, and, and Jessica as well, this is just one program um, within our larger social impact and sustainability initiative at the University of Florida. I first learned of Jessica's uh, the Impact Team Workshop, I believe in fall of 2018. And so I took that with her in winter of 2019 and we launched our pilot in spring of 2019. And right now this spring, we're in our second year. Um, my students will present next week their uh, final project. So our pilot last year, we had 36 graduate business students. They were consulting with nine Florida companies. And this year we have 26 graduate students and 12 undergraduate students um, consulting with 12 Florida companies. Next slide, please. So these are just some um, quick overview of our company partners from last year, and then the next slide is the company partners for this year. Um, they do range from a, like one person um, consulting to a six person design and branding firm to a 20 person worker owned solar energy company to an over 100 person um, manufacturing company that is doing over $25 million a year in sales. Next slide, please. So logistically, um, uh, ours at the University of Florida is structured a little bit more like Fiona's in that they um, meet all together as a class every Tuesday. They are enrolled for credit. Um, and we um, have, um, each team has a student leader as well as what we call a mentor. I think other schools might call these advisors. Um, and their mentors are Florida for Good member B corporations and Florida for Good is Florida's B local, like the B local triangle in um, North Carolina. We also have um, a communication coach who helps at the beginning to um, start launch all the teams with a discussion of teamwork and communication so that we're trying to facilitate and foster collaboration and encourage equity, diversity, and inclusion among all the teams from the get-go. Next slide, please. So um, this year, I, I learned last year we need this. So this year we have weekly class check-ins where every Tuesday the class checks in with me um, on the prompts that are here on the screen. And then they also check in with their mentor and their company partner on Thursdays. Next slide, please. Um, so in terms of outcomes, in um, 2019, uh, we had our final presentations and celebration event, and um, we were joined with our nine company partners and our 11 mentors and seven distinguished judges. We had some refreshments from some certified B corporations, and it was a nice celebration with some um, networking afterward. And Florida for Good, our B local, actually sponsored some awards. So the awards were given to the company partners based on the student's performance. So we gave awards for high score, most improved score, best presentation, and ability to create impact at scale. So this year, next slide please, 
Um, we don't yet know our outcomes because it's coming on Tuesday, um, but we have uh, hopefully um, got some uh, great judges. And again, Florida for Good will be um, giving our awards to uh, the winning teams based on the students' efforts. Next slide, please. Um, so for our final presentations, the students have between five and seven minutes to present and then the judges give about three minutes of feedback. Next slide, please. And um, in 2019, I had the impacts, but we don't yet have them for this year because that's happening next week. But in 2019, our students gained a total of 417 points on the BIA, which is the B impact assessment. Um, six of our nine teams um, scored over 80 points and um, three are in the verification certification process now and three more are going to be certifying by the end of the year and then three more asked to participate again this spring and so they're return company partners with us. Um, next slide please. So we have some great impact stories from students talking about how the experience um, really helped to almost as a capstone for their um, student experience at the university. We also have some great quotes from our company partners. And next slide, which I think is almost my last one. So moving forward, our goal last year had been to scale this so that by three years from last year, we could reach all Florida college students, but it ended up that we got that approval this spring. So starting next spring, we'll be able to include students from all of the Florida colleges and universities. So with that, I'll turn it back over to, I believe, Fiona, who's going to help us split up into our breakout rooms. Great. So thanks so much, Kristen. Um, so the plan for the remainder of our time is to do about uh, 10 minutes now if, if of general Q&A. Um, and then once we are sort of through those kind of general clarifying questions, uh, Jessica, Kristen, and I will each host a virtual breakout session and you can choose to go into whichever one you would like. I think that's right, Dustin. Um, and I then, think that it will be random. So you, okay. uh, you, Kristen, and Jessica will be in different rooms, but folks will be spread out between the right. three rooms. Thank you. So we, uh, we will be here and would be happy to sort of do deeper dives. But um, let me open it up now for a sort of general Q&A. You're welcome to unmute yourselves. Um, or type in a question in the in the chat if you would prefer. All right, so I'm seeing some questions in the uh, in the Q and A. Um, let's see. Um, all right, let's see. There's a question here about the sustainable development goals, and um, yes, the um, the. B, B Lab um, recognized the growing sort of importance of the sustainable development goals, including in the corporate world. And there is now, um, it's called the SDG Action Manager, which is sort of lined, aligned with the questions on the B Impact Assessment. So it is a nice opportunity now um, to also help students learn more about the SDGs and sort of help them understand how that translates to business. Um, let's see, other questions. Um, there's a question from Stephanie. Do you ever work with law students who could be helpful with, with forming benefit corporations? Jessica, do you maybe want to take that question? So I did respond, we haven't, but it looks like uh, Kristen has. Okay, we have not, but interestingly, we just had a conversation yesterday with um, a new student group that's forming at the UNH Law School who wants to be involved. Um, so for people who don't know, um, there are two, there is B Corp certification, which is a voluntary certification that any company can go through. There is also legislation now, I think in like 35 or 40 states in the United States that allows companies to choose to become legally incorporated as a benefit corporation. And that is uh, what that question is referring to. So those two things are sort of different, but related. You can, you can be a certified B Corp without being a legal entity benefit corporation, although increasingly those things are kind of going hand in hand. But um, agree, I think law students could be useful in that aspect. I just had one quick clarification. Also in other yeah, Craig. the state of Washington where I live, they're called social purpose corporations as opposed to benefit corporations. So the legal language might be nuanced. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate you sharing that. Can I ask you a quick question, Fiona? Yes, of course. Wade, go for it. Um, just with respect to the biggest challenge for running this, is it actually getting the B Corps involved or is it getting the coaches or is it like, what's the, is it the students? Like, what's the big 
Well, that's a great, that's a great question. Yeah, Kristen and Jessica, do you want to jump in? And I can also certainly add biggest challenges for each of us. Yeah, it's a great question because I think it's changed over the life of the clinic for us. I think at the beginning for us, it was we've never had a challenge kind of getting our local B Corps involved. I mean, that's never been that's never been an issue from from a coaching from a support perspective. The, at the beginning, the challenge for us was really finding companies to work with in the clinic, kind of creating awareness around what the program was, how it could be a resource to local companies. Um, and that's part of why we really broadened our focus as a clinic to really thinking about impact improvement versus specifically um, certification. And that's really helped us better connect and, and serve as a resource to local communities is being able to provide uh, and serve as a resource kind of across that, that spectrum. So that was the biggest challenge for us at the beginning. I would say now it's really, you know, as we're scaling the program, um, you know, finding financial support um, and really being able to, to sustain the program financially as we scale. Mm -hmm. Kristen, do you want to add in any yeah, um, challenges? Yeah, we haven't had any challenge getting companies to participate. There's actually a waiting list of companies who are looking for teams of students to help them. Um, because this is just our second um, go around, Jessica's on the 10th, so has much more expertise around this. I, I would say like the first year it was just everything was a challenge. Um, but now um, I would say that uh, the students, it, uh, really have to do a deep dive into learning um, the BIA. And I think some of them don't realize that it, it's a lot. Um, so I think that's a piece. And then um, as the program director is just coordinating all the moving parts and pieces between the student teams, their company partners, their mentors, um, I sometimes that's a bit of a challenge. And then as Jessica shared, this is, um, uh, at UF, our, our students are registered for credit, uh, but if they weren't, um, uh, there would be no revenue generation involved at all, and that might be seen as problematic from the administration if it was just a student activity um, and, and there was no revenue tied to it, because there is people's time tied to it. Um, and it might also be helpful for Fiona to maybe share how some of her student assistants are compensated and how she got that arranged, because I think that might be part of addressing one of the challenges that Jessica shared. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I think this is the challenge is not attracting students. I mean, we're just going through our applications for the full clinic right now. And I think we have probably have four or five times as many applications as we have places for. Um, finding clients has not been a problem that's been pretty organic i think you know we, we're at a tipping point now where companies are really interested in this sort of more conscious form of capitalism and so we're seeing a, a really sharp uptick in the number of companies who are interested um, i will say you know i think screening the companies well so we're working what this semester with everything from a, like a two or three billion dollar company public yeah, not public it's a privately held company but it's a a global, you know, world leader in their industry um, with thousands of employees and multiple sites to, you know, a really small, you know, four or five person company. Um, but I think screening those companies well is important. Um, and I think particularly from the perspective of do they have realistic expectations for the clinic? Um, and are they ready to engage? Meaning, do they have one person who will be the point person for the students and who is willing to do donate, to, to devote um, the time? So, you know, we say to our, to our, our clients, you know, you, you individually will probably need to devote at least, you know, a couple of hours a week to this. Um, we typically expect a, a phone call or video call uh, one hour a week with the student team and then you know another hour a week they're probably helping facilitate connections for the students to their colleagues across the company where they need to find the information they need to complete the assessment so I think just you know working and making sure our clients um, are going to be good kind of mentors and good clients to work for our, for our students that that has just been a learning experience I wouldn't say a challenge exactly um, and then funding you know I think funding is the is the is is always the challenge we kind of bootstrap this in the beginning um, I think Jessica is doing this now we, we are also 
inviting companies to consider a charitable donation to the university at the conclusion of the clinic and we have been successful in getting companies to do that i think companies are recognizing the value of this um Kristen was referencing our paid peer mentors we, we were lucky we have a um a fund here on campus um that we were able to apply to um to um fund those peer mentor stipends um, which has been really helpful um, i think you know having high quality team leads peer mentors is really helps um, the experience for everybody um, and this year we actually applied to a charitable foundation here in the northeast the thoreau foundation and um, we were really honored that they have made a fairly considerable grant for us that will allow us to fund this cl the clinic and the growth of the clinic um, in the next academic year. So I think there are also outside foundations that are quite interested in this kind of work and that's definitely a possibility for people I think to get funding. So if I could ask two really quick questions. One is that fund that funds the peers, is that paid by students? Um, is the fund paid, is it paid by student fees or? Yes. No, it's, it was a, it was a, uh, it's a fund that actually was, um, it came out of the Tyco settlement um, a number okay. of years ago. Right. And it, it sits in what's called the Responsible Governance and Sustainable Citizenship Project. And they fund education programs at our university. So the money um, comes from corporate governance malfeasance. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's poetic justice. Yes. Yeah, so we're, yeah, we're really yeah. happy that it's being used in this way to really help. Build I like the other very good question is, um, so I'm gathering that B Corp certification can apply to sole proprietorships and partnerships as well? It can. Um, and then, and I think there was a question in the chat earlier about, you know, when do, when do students start working with entrepreneurs? So to, to be B Corp certified, I believe this is correct, Jessica or Kristen, that you have to be been in operation for at least one year before you can apply for certification. Um, so, um, but many of the certified B Corps around the world are, you know, small, small companies, you know, one, several employees. And then of course, now we have certified B Corps. I think Danone is the, is the biggest certified B Corp in the world. Um, so it really ranges the gamut. Um, and obviously, you know, I think, you know, smaller companies can be in some ways simpler um, in some ways more complicated. You know, we've worked with some small companies where they're, they're great companies, you know, they have great values around sustainability and social justice, but because they're so small, they don't have as many of the kind of more um, official policies and programs in place that maybe a larger company would have, right? So the BI, the B impact assessment, you know, get you get points for having an HR manual and having um, a whistleblower policy and some of those things that just some smaller earlier stage companies just haven't yet developed. And so it requires a different kind of work by those students. I don't know if Jessica or Kristen, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, we, I was just typing in the chat. We have, we have a similar policy. We typically don't work with companies that are um, younger than 12 months old, just because there's not enough data there to be able to rigorously benchmark and typically the entrepreneurs are very busy kind of with uh, that startup phase and so we we actually have a policy where we won't work with companies that are pure pure startups or haven't been in operation um, for at least 12 months um, there was uh, a question about the the fee structure so we've got different models here i mean so ours is a, is a co-curricular uh, model and we do um, we do ask companies at the end of each semester to make a voluntary financial contribution um, to the program and our fee structure is actually parallels it models the cost of B Corp certification which is tiered based on annual revenues and so we ask companies we've had companies pay everything from $500 for a project to companies pay $10,000 for a project and so um, as we scale and as we work with larger and larger companies um, we're definitely on, you know on the road to a strong financially self-sustaining model and I think we've been able to demonstrate that companies um, see a lot of value um, in this type of experiential learning uh, opportunity. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
So let's see if there are no other sort of general questions, we would be delighted to break out into um, some virtual breakout rooms and we can happily do some sort of deeper dives, more logistical nitty gritty for anyone who is interested. Um, but let me just say before we do that, because I don't think we'll come back together again um, at the end. Um, just wanted to say again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we'll all put our emails in the chat. You are very welcome to contact any of us. Um, as Jessica said, um, we would love to invite you to be part of the B Academics uh, group, um, where we're not only talking about B Impact Clinics, but also um, research and engagement and other ways we can integrate the concept of B Corps on campuses. So I encourage you to be part of B Academics. And, and again, just, you know, to say, you know, dream big with us, right? Um, as, as I said at the beginning, I think we are at a moment in history where we, people are finally interested in sort of reimagining capitalism so that it can be um, more inclusive and more sustainable for our planet and for people. And, you know, B-Lab has done a, a lot of incredible work. Um, the reason I think we're all excited about using the B-Impact Assessment as really the core, core curricular tool um, for this program is that it, it really is, you know, A, it's open access and free, but B, it's incredibly well developed. Um, it, the B impact assessment changes every couple of years, really recognizing that there is no, um, you know, this, this, this work is not standing still, right? What makes a good company today is different from what made a good company two or three years ago. And so we love the fact that the B impact assessment is always evolving and changing to keep pace with, with current best practices. Um, it's also a very um, flexible tool. It recognized early on that there wasn't one size fits all. So um, companies will get a different version of the assessment based on the size of their company and on the industry in which they operate. So a company that's a professional service company will get some different questions from a company that's a manufacturing company, for example. And so it's, it really is responsive to um, company size and industry. Um, and it's just very rigorous, right? I think it really, it really um, is comprehensive and really allows students to understand you know, the nuance of what really makes a truly sustainable company today. So with that, um, thank you so much to Jessica and Kristen. Um, always a pleasure to work with you both. I had one more, one last. Of course, please. Thanks. Being a part of the, the B academic community and the broader B Corp movement means we get to connect like this and we get, you get to build programs where we're learning from each other. And so I just wanna say that even though we might've been one of the early programs, we're learning so much from what Fiona you're doing at UNH, Kristen, what you're doing um, at University of Florida. And there's so many other similar programs that have each their own different um, model. And we have this incredible opportunity to learn from each other and to build um, each of our programs through this, this community that we're building. So thank you for all the work that, that both of you are doing. Yeah, thanks for starting this whole thing. That's pretty amazing. Kristen, would you like to share any closing thoughts before we go into the breakout groups? I would just like to say that if you are considering doing this something like this at your school, I had had teams um, working on projects helping companies to take the BIA, but not doing it as an entire class. And um, taking Jessica's workshop was really helpful to figuring out how to scale that and scale that impact. Um, and so as you're choosing which breakout room you might want to hop into, if you are um, most curious about how to start. I think Jessica might be the best person. Um, and if you have any other questions, concerns, or maybe like getting grant funding, Fiona's probably fabulous. And I might be good for helping with people who um, are curious about some of the challenges and how to overcome them. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I, one of the three of us. Yeah, I, I think, unfortunately, Dustin has to randomly assign people to breakouts, Kristen. Uh, but um, but I think what Kristen just said is great for you to follow up with us individually offline. So, um, so yeah, so Dustin, if you could help do the, the brilliant magic that will put us into virtual breakouts, that would be fantastic. Absolutely, Thanks. and I just wanted to confirm, um, I can uh, leave the breakout rooms until 4.50, but after 4.50, it's a hard stop. So we can dismiss from the breakout rooms, correct? Correct, that's right. Awesome, so I'll open those up now. Thanks just... for your help, Dustin, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Dustin. Of course. Thank you.